Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about protocols and class inheritance, which I think is one of the most basic differences with Swift and one of the most powerful tools that a person can learn as they're learning to use Swift. It took me a while to understand the difference because as you're starting to learn software and object-oriented programming, class inheritance is one of the basics, uh, but protocols differ from that quite a bit and they're much more powerful in Swift. So let's just start with a simple example of class inheritance and create a class called city. And we're gonna give it two properties, a population, which is an integer, and a continent, which is a string. Both of these things are basic properties of any city. And the way we typically do this with a class is we create an init where we require these parameters to be passed in every time an instance of this class is created. So we say in the init, please give us a population, which is an integer, and please give us a continent, which is a string. And then we tie it to the properties of the class. We say self population equals population and self continent equals continent. Very, very basic example of a city. And then if we want to create a subclass of city, we we would typically do something like class and call it London. And then we, we subclass it by saying colon city. And then now our London class is a subclass of city, which means it has those properties already in it. And so if we create an instance of London, we'll ask us to, do, to give it a population and a continent in order to create an instance because it has inherited those from the city class. So if we give it both of those things, now we have an instance of London. However, if we want to make London specific, we can also say, does it have a subway? And that's something that not every city has. So we say London has a subway, which is a Boolean, and we say true. And then if we want to print that out, we can say print london.population and we get those the property of london which we had passed in the initializer earlier but this is kind of how inheritance works it's sort of a hierarchy london is more specific version of a city and with each level we add more and more details that are specific to that level because not every city has a subway we only added that in the london level so doing this with protocols is a bit different, but you'll see how much better it is. So let's create a protocol called city. And we're going to say very similarly, we have a variable that's a population and we have a continent, which is a, uh, a variable, which is continent that is a string. And here we have to say, these are getter or setter properties. Population makes sense to be get and set because population changes. We want to be able to read and write that. However, when we think about the continent, here we're only going to say get because we're never going to change the continent of a city. And this is a bit different, different with protocols. You have to give these get and set uh, information so the protocol knows what to expect from a given class. And so now we will again create a class called London. And this way, the syntax is the same. So here we say colon city and city is a protocol. It's, it's not a class, but the syntax is exactly the same. So here we say the class London complies to the protocol city. And so we have to therefore give these two properties, which are part of the protocol inside our class in order to comply to it. And we can either give those properties a value immediately, or we do the same thing as before and create an init where we request them as parameters every time we need to initialize a London class. So we ask again for a population and we ask for a continent and we again tie them the same way with self dot continent equals continent and self dot population equals population. And that's it. We're now complying to the protocol city. And if we want to create an instance of London, again, it asks us for a population and for a continent, just like before. 
But here is where the benefits start to be visible with protocols. We'll print out the population just to see that it's the same thing as before. So see, it's, um, it's 10 million again, and so we're good. But if we want to, for example, add another protocol, we can very easily do this. And each protocol is kind of like an encapsulation, a blueprint of capabilities, either properties or methods. And so if I want to make London a changeable city, meaning its population will change in the future, I can define a separate protocol called changeable. And in there, I'll add a couple of functions which are specific to a city that changes. For example, it will grow and I will have to give it an amount by which to grow and it can also shrink. So I will also give a parameter that is an amount, which is an integer. And now our protocol changeable can also be complied to by some cities, not by every city, but let's say we want to comply London to changeable. We do it like this. We put comma changeable, and now we are expected to define these functions, grow and shrink within our class London. Now it's, it's, it's sort of a preferred way of doing it with an extension, and I'll show you how to do it. Instead of adding comma changeable next to the name, and by the way, uh, one of the benefits is that protocols apply to structs as well, whereas inheritance of classes does not. You cannot, a struct cannot inherit from a class. Only a class can inherit from a class. Here, we can have a struct called London that is complying to a protocol, no problem. But I'm going to comply to changeable with an extension. And the reason for this is it just keeps things more organized. So within this block here that we're creating now, which is changeable, here we'll add the methods grow and shrink. And those will that will be our chunk where we are complying to changeable. So if in the future we want to remove our compliance to changeable, we just chop off this block and we're done. We don't need to you know change too much other things. And so here, uh, for example, grow, we have to define what we want to actually happen. And we want to change our population. So we will say self.population uh, as the other way around, it's plus equals amount. And meaning we'll increase our population by the amount that we're passing in as a parameter. Similarly, shrink, we will do self.population minus equals amount and that will decrease our population and now we've complied to changeable it's that easy and you can kind of envision where this can go you just keep creating new protocols for very compact pieces and if you want to uncomply to them you delete the extension and you're done it's very it's like a puzzle piece it's very easy to create new pieces to attach to your class through protocols. It's really, really super flexible and it's great to work with. It's so easy once it kind of clicks in your mind. And so here, let's use our grow function that we defined. So we're going to print out the London population, then grow it by 5 million, and then print it out again. And you see, we go from 10 million to 15 million. It's it's really that easy. A lot of, a lot of this, there's so many more benefits of using protocols, but this is kind of the very basic idea of it. Instead of being tied to classes and necessarily inheriting all the stuff from a class above, you now have this freedom to create little protocols that are very specific. You can either comply to or not. It's, it's really cool. And another benefit that I only briefly touch on is if you want to create a mock version for unit testing, you can do that as well. Uh, for example, mock London can be created by complying to the same protocols that London complies to. And the reason this is useful is if you have a class that connects to the internet, you don't want to do that in your unit tests every time you run a unit test. So in mock London, you will define these functions as grow and shrink and others so that they don't connect to the internet. And therefore, they're much easier to test. But that's that's a video for another time. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. I kind of wanted to put this in my own words. And once um, some once you understand how it works, it's it's 
just so easy afterwards but it takes a while to click and hopefully this has been helpful for people to to kind of get an idea of it if you liked it please like and subscribe and i'll keep making more videos